Welcome to Just Campers, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace a rear hub oil seal. Now, this oil seal is on Porsche Speedster, but it is exactly the same as a VW Beetle. As you can see, I've already removed the road wheel and the brake drum. To remove the brake drum, you need to remove this centre hub nut. Now, on the Porsche, they're very tight, so this is 400 foot pounds, I believe, and on the Beetle, it's 217. So you may need some help in removing this nut, as in you'll probably need somebody in the car with the vehicle on the ground, road wheel still on, remove the hub cap, then you remove the split pin, and then you'll need a big bar, and you'll need to have the person with their foot on the brake and undo that hub nut. Now I can see that the oil has leaked past the seal and has run down the backing plate. Fortunately, it hasn't got spun all over the brake shoes. Uh, in some cases, when they leak particularly badly, it goes everywhere and then you have to replace the brake shoes as well and remove everything and clean everything down. But this is still fairly clean. The uh, reason this seal has leaked, I don't know yet, but we're going to investigate that. Now, the reason I found it leaking was upon inspection, I found a small little drip on the back of the back plate as I was looking underneath the vehicle. So then I was like, hmm, why is that there? So hence why the drone came off and, and now we can see that our seal is leaking. So I'll give you a close up. As you can see, the axle oil has just leaked past that rubber seal. Not 100% sure why yet. It could just be the seal that's failed or the spring that's around the back of the seal fallen off. So the next thing we're going to do is remove that hub carrier. I'm going to undo the four bolts that hold the carrier through the backing plate to the axle tube. Now they're 14 mil headed bolts and they're quite shallow so when you're on there with your ratchet you need to make sure that you're really square and you undo them nice and steadily. If you find that they're really tight then use a longer bar and again steady the top of the bar as you undo it. You don't want to come off of that nut and then ruin the face of it because it's very shallow. So we're going to undo that. There will be some oil um, and hopefully it's going to run past. It's not going to touch our brake shoes. Obviously if your brake shoes are already ruined it doesn't matter. Just undo it and let the brake, uh, oil come out. You can drain the oil out of the transaxle if you want to first. I'm not too worried. The other thing you can do is lift our axle up with uh, an axle stand with the vehicle on the floor just to try and get it more level so we haven't got so much oil going out. But I'm gonna do it let the oil drain out through there anyway. It's not a problem and then we can top up afterwards. So let's just check if we can get these undone. So they are fairly tight. Again, I'm gonna leave some pressure on here so we don't slip off. Yeah, they're pretty tight. Okay, there's one. We're going to try and loosen this hub seal carrier. Now you can do that by rocking the back plate like so. And it should just gently come forward. We're going to leave the space from there. There goes our oil. And I'm just going to move that round. So it's draining past our brake shoes onto the floor, that's fine. So we'll let that go. And then we can inspect to see why this is leaked. I'm just going to use a couple of our bolts to hold our backing plate in position. As we are still connected to our hard brake line, we need to be careful not to move it too much. We do have a little bit of wiggle room, but our copper pipe is still bolted into our wheel cylinder, so we must be careful. We don't want to move it too much and break that brake pipe. If you're not comfortable moving around with the brake pipe on there, you can disconnect it and clamp off your rubber flexi hose to stop your brake fluid leaking. And then you would have to re-bleed your brakes afterwards anyway. So, I'm just going to put a couple of these bolts in just to hold it in position. So I can now get the rear o-ring out which is the seal which seals between the bearing and our seal housing so let's see if I can move that okay so that's our o-ring that goes round our the back of our wheel bearing so we're going to replace that anyhow so to move our bearing retainer which houses our inner o-ring I'm just going to give it a little light tap around the face to try and bring it away from the wheel bearing you don't need much it's just a little tap Should have, yep, yeah, it's brought it away from the wheel area. So I can pull that off and have a look. And that actually looks very dry in there. And the O ring looks very dry, so it doesn't look like we've been leaking oil there. So we need a little bit of further investigation to find out where the oil was leaking from. The bench, as you can see, is I've got our seal holder with our seal in it. 
and our special tool, which is just the right diameter to fit round and sit on top of our seal and go through our seal holder. So I'm going to give that a bit of a tap and get that knocked out and then we can have a look. So with the seal now removed, it actually looks really good. Uh, and I think it was sealing really nicely around this face to around this face. So I don't think that's our problem. Anyhow, further inspection, I did find this little divot here on the back of our, our holder. Now, this little divot may have allowed the oil to pass the O-ring. On this nice bright face here, the O-ring sits between that and the actual um, back of the backing plate, through the backing plate, sorry, and actually onto the axle. And it seals the oil, stops the oil coming from in here outwards. Now I think possibly the O-ring wasn't getting compressed into this groove and the oil was passing through here and dripping down here. And yes, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom of our seal holder, which is where most of the oil was. Now there's a possibility the oil was leaking through here and then getting picked up by the rotation of the drum and thrown around our seal. So it was a little bit misleading to start with, I think. Um, the other thing, it could have well been leaking through the center of our oil seal. So we're going to replace this oil seal anyway, but belt and braces, I'm going to gently polish this down to get rid of that little indentation because it's actually quite deep. So it's going to take a little bit of polishing and then we'll have a nice face again for the O-ring to sit up against and hopefully stop the leak. So using a flat surface and a bit of abrasive paper, I was actually lucky enough to be able to polish out that horrible divot line without taking too much material off. So it's literally just very gently kept going until we got rid of our divot line. And as you can see now we've got a beautiful bright face and that will allow our O-ring to sit up nicely and seal. Now to put the seal in, I'm going to push it in from behind. Now the reason being is that there's a, a lovely chamfered edge here. So we're not going to catch the seal going in and damaging it at all. If you try and put it in from the front, it's got a real sharp edge. So you could damage the side of the seal as we're pushing it in that way. So I'm going to go in from behind, like so. Just start it off with my thumb. So we can just start to put it in. That's it. There is a little tip. You can use a little bit of brake cleaner, which makes it slippery for a short period of time until the brake cleaner disperses. And that might help you put your seal in. You could also use a little touch of seal around the outside of the seal if you felt like it was necessary. If there was a small amount of damage on our holder, then that's what I would do. Then we do have this tool, which is just the right size to fit snugly around the outside at the back of the seal without damaging it. And then we can start to just gently tap it home. So we just gently work our way around. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm just going to bring it forward so it's almost flush with the front. So what I've done, I've pushed the seal through the back of the holder and it's now flush with the front. And we know that that seal's in nice and straight and there's not going to be any problems with it being slightly uh, off of straight line as it were. Now that's cool. Let's, um, let's get ready to put that back on the car. Cleaning down with some solvent, some brake cleaner. We can get rid of all that gearbox oil that le leaked out. Now it's stopped leaking. Right, first thing we're going to do, put our washer on first, mustn't forget him. He's got to go on first. He just literally goes on up against the wheel bearing. Next thing we have is our little O-ring. So this small O-ring goes, follows on after that washer. That sits in our little chamfer of our bearing retainer. So again, we have to make sure we get this around the right way. So that chamfered edge needs to go inward. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on this to help, help it sit in place. And then when that's pushed up against it hard, it's not gonna pinch our O-ring, it's gonna actually allow the O-ring to move slightly and sit in a nice, a nice uh, place and seal up. So let's put a little bit of grease on that. Next one to go on is our big O-ring, and this goes around the outside of our wheel bearing and goes through our backing plate and up against the actual axle um, housing itself. And then we've, we've put our seal housing back on. 
that will actually squeeze between on that face there and through our backing plate onto our axle. So let's get a little bit of grease on that too. Again, the grease will just help it move in position and stop it getting pinched. It's a little bit more tricky because we've got our back plate floating again at the minute. So it takes a little bit of jigger in. Just going to push him past the back plate so he's behind. So we do that with a little tiny screwdriver. So we're being super careful because we don't want to get that any damage to that O-ring at all. Just pushing through the back plate. Our O-ring's in our correct position. On a beetle, we'll have a shaped housing which will meet the shaped gasket. Now this gasket fits on the back and the other one fits on the other side of our axle. That's on a beetle. So we don't need these on our Porsche. Got a lovely clean face for that O-ring to squeeze up against now. So here comes the fun bit. We're going to undo the two bolts that are holding our backing plate in. And they're going to wiggle this in position, right, right way up, and get some bolts in. And we should be good to go. You can see we have our inner O-ring just here in front of our washer at the back. There it is there. We've got our outer seal. And obviously between here and the other side of our axle, we've got our outer O-ring. So all we've got left to do is to put our bearing retain, retainer stroke spacer in here. Time to torque our bolts up. These are 32 foot pounds or 43 Newton meters. Get nice and easy and Good, now that's that talked. Let's get that bearing retainer on and get it finished. So next is our spacer, or our bearing retainer. It's got a chamfer on the front and it has a slight chamfer on the rear as well. So you could put a bit of grease on here and that'll just help it slide over our new seal. Let's try that. So that over the top. Ah, oh, just gently, lovely, pushes into place. And then once the drum goes on and our hub nut goes on, that squeeze the bearing up nice and tight against our axle. So lastly, all we have left to do is tighten that hub nut. Luckily, I've got my mate in the car to give me a hand. He's got his foot on the brake and on the handbrake. Right there, we ready to go. So remember, this is 400 foot pounds, pretty tight. There we go. Just put our split spin through it and we're all finished. So that was how to remove and replace a rear hub oil seal. For any more how-to videos, visit justcampers.com or follow us on YouTube or Facebook.